be agreed to. Um, Mr. The Honourable David Parker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I uh, rise to speak to this bill on behalf of the Labour Party. Uh, the Labour Party will be supporting this bill to the Select Committee. The Labour Party supports the function of the International Monetary Fund and the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development, and broadly agrees with the Minister of Finance that these are good institutions uh, that assist the conduct of international uh, economic affairs in a way that benefits New Zealand as well as other countries. We do uh, think that the regulation-making power that is conferred by this piece of legislation ought not to proceed, and we'll be seeking to amend that at Select Committee, and that's something that I will come back to uh, a little later. Sir, uh, this bill amends the International Financial uh, Agreements Act 1961, and as the Minister says, that includes our obligations to the International Monetary Fund and the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development. Uh, the uh, changes that are afoot in this bill are giving effect to changes to the treaty which have been agreed uh, in principle by the New Zealand Government but are not effective in New Zealand law until this Act is passed. Uh, I'm told that, in fact I'm aware that the changes uh, that are promoted here are quite separate from the increases in commitments that uh, were made to the $430 billion IMF fund that was proposed by the G20, or backed by the G20, uh, in, in, uh, in, in recent months. Sir, so I think uh, the, the underlying occurrence here is that the legislation is reflecting an update to the international agreement which changes the share of different countries in the world in terms of how much they have to contribute to the pool that the IMF maintains because there has been significant growth in other countries that is higher than New Zealand's growth rate, our share of that relative pool is decreasing. Uh, the, uh, uh, the effect on New Zealand's contribution overall is not large and that it goes from a 2.9 billion to 3 billion New Zealand dollar share of the pool because the um, the, the call that is being made on individual members per unit, if you like, is decreasing as the size of the pool increases through other countries that are growing faster than New Zealand, increasing their share of the pool. Now, I don't have a, a, a problem with that. I would point out that it does show that the underlying, uh, um, the underlying drive of wealth, or at least monetary wealth, uh, does depend upon the relative size of your economy uh, and we're not doing very well in that regard as evidenced by the fact that just today we've had an announcement from the government to show that their growth forecast is not uh, coming true, tax revenues down and the deficits worse than was predicted at the time of the last election. But that doesn't, say, that doesn't mean that it's not wise for us to do our bit in respect of these international institutions. And although there may be some who say that New Zealand should be isolationist in our approach to these matters and just look after our own interests internally, the Labour Party doesn't think that is right. And indeed, we think that uh, New Zealand is one of the countries that benefits from international organisations such as the IMF. The, the Minister made reference to the advice-giving uh, role of the International Monetary Fund. I think that is an important role. I think it's uh, interesting to reflect on the fact that one of the most important pieces of advice that they gave to New Zealand in recent years has been ignored. That advice was that we should be changing our tax system so that we have a neutral investment signal, so that we have people investing for the growth of the New Zealand economy based on the profitability and the productivity of their business rather than the tax effectiveness of their business. The International Monetary Fund, along with the OECD and our own Treasury and the Reserve Bank, all favour New Zealand adopting a capital gains tax. So I would uh, use this opportunity to note that it's, uh, if we're going to pay for these institutions, we should uh, heed their advice. Uh, and on this occasion, they've got it right, and it's the national government that's got it wrong. And of course, that's one of the reasons why New Zealand misdirects its precious investment capital into wrong parts of the economy, and we're not growing as well as we should, which is the underlying cause of our budget deficit not improving as fast as it ought to. 
Mr Speaker, uh, the, um, the issue as to whether in future amendments to the International Finance Agreements Act should be by way of statutory regulation is, in my view, an important one. At the moment, the, the, uh, the executive is required to come before Parliament and explain a change to these international agreements. That's the effect of the legislation as it currently sits. And indeed, the Minister of Finance has done that today. That's as it should be, because these things have uh, financial implications for New Zealand that are important. And I don't agree that we should be creating a regulation-making power so that this is something that is done by the executive without further recourse to Parliament. Of course, the executive has to, uh, to um, uh, authorise the, the uh, Minister of Finance or his delegate to go along to international monetary fund meetings and make provisional agreements in respect of changes to the IMF rules. The IMF uh, rules don't take effect immediately because the IMF rules contemplate that ministers like our Minister of Finance have to come back and get approval from their legislatures. And that's actually why it is that this change to the International Monetary Fund rules didn't take place immediately upon those meetings back in 2008 and 2010 because there had to be sufficient number of companies ratified the agreement in principle that had been reached at those IMF meetings. The fact that we're one of the last countries in the, in the world to do that, they're already up over 85%, so these changes are already um, being given effect to at the International Monetary Fund, that uh, is because this, the government's been slow in putting this on the order paper, doesn't mean to say that it ought not to be on the order paper. Uh, Mr Speaker, I think that uh, uh, agreements such as this I think New Zealanders will have more confidence in our participation in these international fora if they think governments are being transparent about changes to those international agreements uh, and the effect of those changes on New Zealand. I think we breed suspicion, and there's already enough suspicion out there as to the effect of international agreements. We breed further suspicion if we're not open and transparent about changes to those rules. So for those reasons, amongst others, the Labour Party opposes future changes to this legislation by being by way of statutory regulation, making power that this amendment act creates. We believe that uh, future amendments ought to come back to this parliament. If we look back in the history, this hasn't, uh, hasn't been an onerous task for New Zealand to amend this legislation through uh, annual amendments or anything like that. It, it is relatively rare that we have amendments uh, to this International Finance Agreements Act, which dates back to 1975. So, Mr Speaker, whilst the Labour Party approves of the change, which uh, decreases the total percentage of, New or the percentage of New Zealand of this greater pool, uh, increases the size of the pool um, overall, but then says that the, the individual contributions uh, uh, a pro rata decreased so that the overall effective cost to the country is about the same. We think it is a wise change. I would also note, uh, I don't want to think that people should overstate some of the changes that are being made to IMF voting rights. I'm uh, informed that for amendments, 85% of the votes of members are required, or votes plus ratification by those members subsequently. Uh, the US still effectively holds a veto right because they've got 16% of the votes. So uh, we shouldn't overstate the, uh, the, uh, the, the changes in that regard. Mr Speaker, uh, we oppose the future changes by may, being made by way of regulation but support this bill to select committee. Called Todd McClay. Mr Speaker, thank you. It, uh, gives